Thank you for tuning in to this video blog from the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. I wanted to chat with you a little bit about the outlook encountering the Islamism and radicalism of ISIS today into 2016 and what's been happening since 2015. A year ago when I spoke to you in another video blog about another surge of violence committed in the name of my religion of Islam, we saw an Islamist madman, a self-proclaimed cleric that had held innocent people at gunpoint, killing two at a cafe in Sydney, Australia. We saw in Pakistan, Yemen, Nigeria, nearly 300 people were slaughtered by individuals claiming a divine mandate. In Syria, the slaughter of thousands every few weeks continues. And now, this bloodshed continues with the Assadist regime, killing hundreds of thousands on the other side of that coin of militancy. Using chemical weapons and any means necessary to kill the moderate Syrian forces, while ra radical ISIS continues to thrive. Most recently, attacks in Beirut, Nigeria, and of course Paris in January, and again in November, and last, most recently on our own soil in San Bernardino, California, in December, have captured worldwide attention as murderers slaughtered innocents with the name of God dripping from their lips. I speak to you today with a heavy heart and a confession. In times like these, it becomes easy to feel discouraged about my mission to defeat radical Islam. Because in concert with my fellow reformist Muslims and non-Muslim allies, we struggle to get the platforms, the attention, and the strategy from media, government, academia, and activist groups in general, as people list the problems but rarely are focusing on solutions. While our political leaders consider measures to curb an influx of individuals who claim the faith of Islam and ethnic heritage, who may look and pray like me, and while an unsophisticated and increasingly troubling partisan debate often about stopping Muslim immigration or even creating a Muslim registry, as was discussed a few months ago in the headlines, ISIS continues to advance, killing both Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Women continue to be controlled and killed in the name of religion, and dissidents, any minority voice, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, remain on death row across Muslim-majority societies. It's not just ISIS. It's most of these Muslim-majority societies that use Sharia law as their edict of theocracy through their states. And yet, we keep oddly hearing for calls from our so-called allies, like the Saudis, or the Qataris, nations which are veritable boot camps for ISIS and Islamist and Salafi jihadism to grow. They're not our allies. They simply want to end the militant viral groups that they create. I've said this before and I'll say it again, and it only rings more true today, that our work to defeat Islamism, the theopolitical ideology responsible for the murders and subjugation we continue to see increasingly the world over, is more important now than ever. It is not without sadness, and yes, some frustration, that I wonder just how many more lives will be lost in order for all people of conscience and principle to stand up and say enough to this scourge. Similarly, I wonder what must happen for people on both sides of the political divide as we now enter the most partisan time of the year of elections and primaries, from liberal to conservative, to smarten up and get real about how to address this issue. Just as the solution is not to debate or placate the terrorists or engage in, cultur in cultural relativism, it is also self-destructive to alienate those of us working at great personal risk often to fight this ill from within our community. So while some conversations may feel like catharsis, and certainly the abandonment of political correctness is part of the solution, these cathartic conversations are not stopping the bloodshed. We must face solutions. 
we at the American Islamic Forum for Democracy send our condolences every day to all those continually affected by the surges of Islamist violence. We stand shoulder to shoulder with you as a wall against that evil, and we will not break this bond. But at the same time, we must demand that all who sincerely seek to end the surge of radical Islam at once and finally join us in this battle. And it's no longer just us at the American Islamic Forum. We have created and formed and convened a coalition of Muslim groups called the Muslim Reform Movement we ask you to also join. We have for years warned of and tried to address the issue of radicalization within the Muslim community and especially those of us in the West. We've done so with a lot of meaningful support, but just not enough. It's time for liberals and conservatives, Muslims and non-Muslims, the religious and non-religious, to stand with liberty-minded Muslims for reform against the enemy that threatens us all. Please join us. The world will not know peace until we stand together. Learn more about our work by visiting us at aifdemocracy.org and sign up to our email list to communicate with us and engage with us in our work. Thank you, and God bless.